Well, good morning. I'm Mark Manzer. I'm, I'm good friends with uh, Dennis and Diane. We go back way, well, many years, and uh, Dennis has had tremendous influence in my life. Uh, he has actually been kind of a mentor to me and uh, throughout the years in ministry, and I, I, I count him as uh, someone who has had probably the greatest impact in my life. You have a great pastor, you know that? And, and pastor's wife? And uh, I just hope you know that, because I, I love them dearly. My wife and I, we love them dearly. And so it is a privilege for me to be able to stand in this place on his behalf and uh, to share the word of God with you. So I would ask you, obviously, uh, we're a week out from Christmas. Are you ready for Christmas? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, how many still got gifts to give? Get Anybody? You know, all right, a few there, all right. I think most of us, ours, have, oh, we got maybe a couple more to arrive through Amazon or something like that. You know, our Christmas, I, last night I was working on our Christmas picture cards, you know, stuffing them. I don't know if you guys send those out. We send them out. And uh, we uh, got this nice picture and wrote a nice little thing to put on the back. And those are going out tomorrow. But I would ask, so what, what is it that you love about Christmas? Uh, is it the food? You know? Maybe family time, uh, the gifts, or most likely it's a combination of all three, isn't it? We, we love the, every aspect of Christmas in that, that way. Yet one of the greatest, the greatest joys of Christmas can be found in giving. Uh, there's a phrase that we say at times, it's better to give than to receive, right? And it's so true. I don't always enjoy shopping. <laughs> um, uh, I don't always, in fact, I don't wrap gifts, but uh, my wife does. All right. I, uh, uh, and that, but boy, do I love to give gifts that my wife wraps. You know, it's a good deal. <laughs> I love that. And, uh, uh, you know, the same, may, the same may be true for you. Uh, you love to watch, you know, when, you know, when you've given a gift, someone tear it open, you know, and, and, uh, and go through the wrapping. Uh, you love to watch the, maybe the, you know, their face kind of light up, and, uh, and you love to hear the words. It's just what I wanted, yeah, you know, in, in, in that way. Now, this whole gift-giving thing for my wife Sue and I has gone to a whole new level as uh, we are the grandparents of six, soon to be seven, grandkids. I know, do I look that old? No way, it's impossible. I got a, I got a mid-January, I got my seventh grandchild coming. You see, when we uh, give a gift to one of our grandchildren, uh, we get a double benefit um, because when you show this kind of love uh, to a grandchild, uh, we, in the process, love their parents, right? You don't have to get their parents a gift anymore. <laughs> it's a good deal, and so you, well, maybe not. But, uh, you know, they still seem to want, want those gifts. But, but uh, when we you know, show love to their kids, our grandkids, we love the parents, and so there's this double benefit. Last weekend, uh, my son Nick and his wife Lauren, a daughter-in-law, and our two-year-old granddaughter, Autumn, came over to visit us for the weekend. And, uh, and we, we love it. I tell you, we love it when our kids bring their kids to our house. There's nothing better. Anybody, can you relate, right? You, uh, you know? And since we're not going to see them till, uh, well, after Christmas, we thought, well, let's wrap up Autumn's gifts and uh, we'll have her open them while we're here, you know, while they're here, you know, with us and, and, uh, and for the weekend. And it was great. It was just like, yes, yes, you know, I just, I love giving gifts, you know, to my grandkids. And, um, and one of the gifts we got her was a stroller, a little baby stroller. She brought her baby. She strapped that baby. Of course, she opened that baby. Dad, her dad had to put it together. I love watching that. And he, he's putting together and putting the wheels on. And, and you know, and now I'm just watching this, taking this all in. And, and, uh, and then 
we went strolling throughout the whole house. You know, in my house, you go from living room to kitchen to hallway to dining room. And you just go in this big circle. And so we're just we're strolling, getting dizzy. And, and it was, well, it was a great time. You know, what's, what's the best? And my uh, font didn't work completely. That should say the greatest gift there. But what, what's the best Christmas gift you have received? Think about that. What is the best Christmas gift you received? I remember getting a red Stingray bike, yes, with a banana seat. What you don't know about when I got this bike, though, it was a hand-me-down. My parents didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up, and so my, there was actually a bike my brothers had, uh, had been riding for some years, but Dad, he thought, well, Mark, he needs a Stingray bike, a red one, and a new banana seat on there, and so he painted it all nice and red, and, and I got that Stingray bike, and boy, I tell you, it was a gift of freedom. Um, I could now roam the neighborhood and, uh, and with such great freedom. I was just off and going with my brothers. You know, learning to ride a bicycle and having a bike, it changed my life. It did. It changed my life. Gave me a whole new perspective. Have you ever received a, a gift that has changed your life? life, or a gift that, well, that inspired you and, well, changed your future. You ever received a gift like that? You know, there's this actor guy named, his name Nicholas Cage, and I, I heard this story, hopefully, I, I don't know, maybe you need to, re- I tried to research it a little bit, but it's, a, it's supposed to be a true story about Nicholas Cage, and uh, he was a, when he was a young boy, his father Gave him a little Pinocchio doll for Christmas. And being a boy, he was a little rough with it. And he broke his head off. You ever have that? You give a gift and a kid breaks the head off. You know, like, oh, man, you know. And, uh, and then, so his father, well, he suggested that they bury Pinocchio in the backyard. The next morning, On the very place where he had buried Pinocchio was a large wooden sculpture of Pinocchio. Now, there's a dad, right? (laughs) Right? And so the next day after that, he went about burying his matchbox cars, (laughs) his toy planes, a castle, his G.I. Joe doll, hoping it would all, you know, transform into something bigger, you know? I don't think it did. But to this day, Nicolas Cage says that that little Pinocchio gift was the best gift he had received because it gave him the gift of imagination, hope, and inspiration. And these continued to help him throughout his, his life and his career as an actor. And so I'd ask you, what about you? What about you? Are are there gifts, all right, that have influenced your life? And and are there gifts that have changed your life? I I remember another gift I got from my older brother. He gave uh, to me when he was a college student. This is some over 40 years ago. Hard to believe. I still remember it to this day. And I opened the gift and it was a copy of the NIV Bible. Now, this was major, the NIV Bible, okay, <laughs> was just, I believe, coming out in a new translation. And he gave me, my older brother gave me a Bible, but it was a copy of the NIV Bible. I got that Bible that I could read and understand. And you know what? It changed my life. And even more so because my big brother gave it to me. I read that thing, I wore that Bible out because of the example and the gift that my brother gave to me. It was impactful. Here's the thing. You know, the, trans, the, the, the tradition of giving gifts, it, it, it's great because it reminds us of the Christmas gift that, of Jesus that God gave. God, you know, he's the first Christmas giver. He gave the first gift, 
the most expensive gift, the greatest gift. John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That verse there, we've quoted it over and over again, but it's such a powerful verse, and it reminds us really as we come back here to Christmas. See, it's easy it's easy to hear the Christmas story and think, boy, that's a wonderful story. However, the Christmas story is far more than just a story about something that happened in the past. The Christmas story is about the truth changing your life. It's about a gift that becomes a turning point in your and my life if we will just simply receive it and open it up and live it out. See, when we come to truly open this gift of, of, of Jesus Christ at Christmas, him giving himself to us, it is then that we begin to understand what God is announcing to the world, to the angels, to the shepherds. What happened that so many years ago. Here's a gift that will change your life, that will change your eternity. You see, the gift of Jesus changes our future. It changes our eternity. And as a result, it impacts your life today. The gift of Jesus that we celebrate at Christmas is really a, just the first part of understanding this great gift of God. See, God, God uh, gave his son at Christmas so that he would live this perfect life that we cannot live and then pay the debt of our sin that we cannot pay that one day he, he would go to the cross and he would die to pay that debt. See, it's part of the bigger story of why Jesus came that Advent, that first time that he would come, live that perfect life, and then pay that price, the price of our sin that we cannot pay. And see, when he went to the cross, he went there to so that we might experience the forgiveness of our sins and be given eternal life. Wow. Think about that. Just think about that. Talk about the greatest gift you can receive. It's the gift of forgiveness of our sins. And that's why Jesus came that first advent. John, uh, Titus 3 says this, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we have done, nothing that we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, when we come, we are made new. We are born again. And then by his Spirit, we are renewed. See, Jesus didn't come into the world for us because we deserved him or because we were friends with him or because we are part of his family. You know, many of the gifts you're going to give this coming week uh, at Christmas, well, it's to repay people a little bit, right? <laughs> All right. Or, there's, or, or, or it's because we feel like, well, hey, you know, they deserve it or, or, or expected. They're part of the family, right? You got to get your grandkids something. Right? We give them. That's really kind of the, the motivation. It's a, an expression of, of, of love. But see, that's not why God gives us the gift of Jesus. You know why it is? It's because we need Jesus. We need him. Each of us here has a major problem. Without Jesus, we have no hope. And we have no future. But here's the truth that makes the gift of Jesus so great. None of us deserve the gift of Jesus. We don't. I stand here not deserving anything that God has done in my life. 
but only grateful that he has worked in my life. See, as God tells us in Romans 3, we all fail to meet the standard of his righteousness. The, the apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 3, as the scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one. No one truly is truly wise. No one is seeking God. We all fail to meet God's standard of righteousness, yet God in his mercy and generosity willingly gives us this gift of Jesus. Without the gift of Jesus, we would have no hope of a future with God. A future that the Bible says is a place where nothing will perish, spoil, or fade. A future that the Bible says is a place where there will be no tears or, and no pain. Boy, that sounds good to me, right? Uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, there's no way we can have such a future, that kind of future, in eternity, in heaven, without Jesus. And here at Christmas, we find the introduction to the greatest gift. God gives the gift of his son to us freely without us needing to earn it. It's a great gift. It's so important gift. But what's also important to understand in the gift of Jesus is that, is that it's to be experienced and lived out today, to be known today, to be walked out in our life today. When we trust Jesus to be our Savior, that gift changes our life today. And here's how. Well, one, we get a new identity. We get a new identity. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in other words, you've come and you've opened up that gift and you stand now in Christ he says he or she is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. So many people um, today define themselves by their past, by their faults, maybe by their sins. And so their failures or negative experiences, they let define their lives, and the result is that those things be, continue to consume them. Others uh, will define themselves by their accomplishments, what they do or the, you know, the things that they possess. And the result is that when those things go away or are lost because uh, of life or the reality of the world we live in or just this, this reality of growing old, you know, I, I'm at that stage where I'm starting to experience some 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 pains and things in life, and the back doesn't quite function in the same way. And that reality, if I, if I put my identity in those things and things, and, and maybe even in my physical body, all right, um, when we grow old, they'll disappoint. Disappointment can consume your life. And here's the thing. You never... You never want to base your identity on something you can lose. How many times have you been given a gift and a year later you don't remember it? It's lost. It's gone. But with Jesus, that's not the case. The gift of Jesus, that's not the case. With the gift of Jesus, you are a new creation. You are a child of God, something that cannot be taken away. You are accepted. You are forgiven. You have eternal value, and you are loved, and God wants to use you if you've opened the greatest gift that a person can receive. When we trust Jesus Christ to be our Savior, this, I tell you, this gift, it changes our life. Not only in the future, but it changes our life today. There's a second thing, though, that we get 
in this gift of Jesus Christ, and that is that we get a new power. Are you tired? Anybody weary a little bit? Has life, life worn us down a little bit? What's going on in the world sometimes begins to become a burden on our shoulders. You know, uh, even after many years of following Jesus Christ, uh, I forget sometimes to rely on this power that I have. This power um, that I can live in the power of the gift that comes through Jesus and that's the Holy Spirit's power. Romans 5.5 5 says this, And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. It is God's love that empowers us, and it comes as we walk in his Spirit. You know, one of my... Uh, One of my favorite passages that I will quote to myself when I'm struggling with being overcome, and that's the reality. We live in a world that wants to overcome our faith in Jesus Christ, that wants to discourage us. And I tell you, that's when we got to turn back and we got to turn to the Word of God and let it it be our source of encouragement, let it be our source of power. But a verse that I that I, I, us, I usually quote to myself, I, I shout it out aloud over and again, is this verse from 2 Timothy 1, second, uh, 1 7, where it says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear. Are you driven by fear? Are things causing you to fear? God's not giving you that spirit of fear, but he's giving you a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline, or you could even put in there this idea of a sound mind. In, when the world is going crazy, when there's chaos all around, the one thing we can know, and when, we, when we've stepped into and are living out this gift of Christmas, is that we can live with a sound mind. We can live with power, with hope. See, there's power to live life by that comes through the Holy Spirit, through his love for you, and it results in a life that's under control, that lives at peace, that's not driven by fear. When we trust Jesus to be our Savior, this gift, I tell you, it changes our life. Today, today. But there's a third thing that we get when we open this gift at Christmas or or this gift that was introduced to us at Christmas. We get a new community. You know, you cannot live life alone. Do you know that? You've got to live it in relationship. It's so, so important. You were meant to live in relationship first with God, but second with God's family. Now, Here's the thing, is, is everyone in God's family? No, no they're not. They are part of God's creation, but not everyone is part of God's family if they haven't opened and received the gift. See, that's what the gift of Christmas is making a way for you to become part of. Not only to be forgiven and not only to have an eternity, but not only to live in power, but, uh, but also to have a family of God that you are connected to and then that you have relationship. And that's why, Jesus, that's why Jesus went to the cross to make a way for you to live in the family of God. Paul writes in Ephesians, he speaks of this family relationships when he says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. And there's how he wants to develop us and grow us in this relationship that we step into when we open the gift of Christmas. But then he goes on there in verse 5. In love, he predestined us to be, what? Adopted as his sons or daughters. That's family. That's family. Through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. See, God created this family right here 
to be a support and foundation to you, living life and, and knowing the fullness of this gift of Jesus that we celebrate here at Christmas. So many people, and I think as a result of these past few years, this has probably been the, the greatest uh, damage, if I could use that word, to the church, is the loss of community, is the loss of family that we have. They don't realize the necessity of being a part of the church family, of gathering together and praying together and growing together and, and living life together. See, without the church family, you have no support for living out faith in Jesus Christ. It, it's vital. It's key. It's, it's part of the gift that we open when we step into relationship with Jesus. So when we trust in Jesus to be our Savior, this gift, my, I tell you, it changes our life today. But there's a last thing I would leave with you, and that is this. I'm reminded that we get a new eternity. R Romans 6.23 says this, for the wages of sin, that's the debt. There's a debt all of us have that's got to be paid that wages of sin is death, and that's eternal separation from God because we're born into sin. But then it says this, the gift. Again, this is part of this greatest gift that we begin to open and I'll come to understand at Christmas. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's no more that I could say and add to that. This gift of eternal life. That one day after this life, we look to the future, we look to a hope, and we look to an eternity for those who have opened up the gift. The gift of Christmas. The gift of Jesus Christ. And so I would ask you, have you opened the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ? Have you come to that place where... You've admitted, hey, I am a sinner in desperate need to be rescued. And I believe that Jesus Christ came at Christmas and he lived the perfect life, but then he went to the cross to pay the debt that I could not pay. And I believe he did that for me. And now I confess him to be my Lord and Savior. Have you opened that gift? It's offered. It's not, it's, it can only be experienced, though, if you choose by faith to come to and confess him, whether it's a, a prayer that you pray or a, a simply pronouncing, Lord, I confess you to be my Lord. Say, I admit I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross, and now I commit my life to follow after you. Have you done that? Have you opened it? It's changed my life. It's changed Pastor Dennis's and Diane's life. It's phenomenal. We are amazed at the grace that God gives in the midst of that gift. But then secondly, I would ask this. Maybe you have opened the gift, and maybe you've lost sight, and maybe there's been some discouragement in your life. But uh, I would ask this. Are you living out the gift of salvation? Because, see, it's not a one-time experience that we just kind of grab a hold of, but it's an everyday thing that we, we step into and we walk with and we experience. Have you ever had a, had a gift that you give into a child and they open it and then they just set aside and they never play with it again? Never use it again? What disappointment is that, right? Right? It's like, I'm taking it back. I'm going to go get my money. You're not going to play with that stroller? Stroller? You know, she played it, but it's right. And God has given us this gift, right? 
He calls us to live it out as followers of him, ones who have opened up and stepped into it. And, and he calls us to, to living it with a new identity. You are a new creation. He calls us to living with a new power in our life. You have the Holy Spirit. You can't do it in your own power. You have to rely on the Holy Spirit living it out in your life. He calls us to living in community, being a part of the family of God. And he calls us to living with a view to eternity with God. That's hope, folks. That's peace. That's joy. That's the gift of Jesus. Would you pray with me? God, I pray for each one here today. I don't know what's going on in their life. I don't know where they are at in their walk with you. I don't even know if they've opened up the gift. But I know that your truth goes forth, and I know, Lord, that the Holy Spirit is present in this place, and he speaks, you will speak to each heart, and I pray that you would do that in this moment, this time of reflection that we have. I commit each one here to you. May you encourage them in their life. May they find the joy of the Savior, the joy of the gift of Jesus in a fuller way in this, this week ahead, but especially in this year ahead, we pray in thy name. Amen. Worship team's going to come and lead us in a final song. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Mark.